Do you think it makes us kinder learning about the universe or do you think it makes us more nihilistic and narcissistic? And no, if you learn about it as you should, you shouldn't be nihilistic. There's no force of nihilism in the knowledge, wisdom, and insight you get by studying the universe. Uh, you, you will never find marching armies led by astrophysicists to go slaughter one another. We, the cosmic perspective prevents that. The cosmic perspective. Yeah. By the way, if you look at the chapter titles in there, they're each pairs of words that we've all used, and but we've argued over, many of them, over our Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know if there's a version of Thanksgiving in the UK. Everybody, maybe it's just Christmas. Everybody gathers, and the crazy uncles and aunts come in, and you got to argue with them about, you know, and you— then you you reminded why you only see them once a year <laughs> because <laughs> no there are topics in there color and race is in there law and order body and mind meatarians and vegetarians life and death a lot of reflective moments in there so this book though it's all these topics that people fight about its goal is to say you think that and you think that you got to look at it this way mm -hmm. it's not meat in the middle no. It's meat on a plane of existence above what you're arguing. And you look down on what you're arguing and realize how ridiculous it is. That's the goal of that book. Chapter 10 of the book it says, human physiology may be overrated. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, you know, we like to think of ourselves at the top of evolutionary uh, properties. But it's really your mind, surely, but... Not much else. You know, we, it's odd because we always imagine aliens having humanoid bodies. Yeah. And there's no reason for that. If they come from another planet, most life on earth doesn't have a humanoid body. The banana doesn't have a humanoid body and you have DNA in common with it. You don't have any DNA in common with an alien from another planet, yet it's walking around with a neck, eyes, nose, mouth, head, ears, shoulders, arms, fingers, kneecaps, feet, really? Is that, is, that, is that your best imagination that you can come up with? Alien from another planet? Is the, is the universe infinite? I've often wondered that. Does it just go on forever? Or is there a- We're scene? not given reason to think it doesn't, but our horizon has an edge. What we can see. Yeah, but there's no reason to think, so you're, you're a ship at sea mm -hmm. and you have a horizon. Are you saying, well, that's the extent of the ocean? No, because if you sail towards the horizon, more horizon shows up, and you keep that up until you hit land. Hmm. So in the universe, we have our horizon, and if we went to that horizon, we'd have a whole other horizon beyond that. Hmm. If we traveled to that horizon, there'd be a whole other horizon there. The question is, how, how far does that go? We don't know. We have no idea. It's simpler mathematically to think it goes forever. It's curious how there's some equations where infinities work just fine in the equation. Uh, so we don't know. We can talk about to our own horizon, that's it. There's so many people saying that they've seen aliens. We had someone on this podcast actually that said they'd seen aliens. Not they'd seen aliens, but they had evidence that aliens existed. And they worked in the military and said that they'd... Uh, you know, some of these spacecraft footage that you see from the Navy. Did they show you the alien? No, but you see the videos of the things bouncing around in the sky. Oh, fuzzy videos. Fuzzy videos. So those are UFOs. They're not aliens. UFOs, yeah. UFOs. There's a difference. Oh, yeah. Many people equate the two. But if you see something in the sky and you don't know what it is, it's a UFO. And what does the U stand for? Unidentified. Until you can identify it, it's a UFO. And because it does things that you don't understand, you cannot equate that with it being an alien. You just said you don't know what it is. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know what it is. Therefore, it must be an uh, alien? If once you just said you don't know what it is, that's the end of the sentence. You can't go on and say, therefore, it must be anything. You can be impressed with videos that have no explanation. I don't have a problem with that. But you want to turn around and say it's aliens? You want to say it's a government cover-up? Do you really think the government is that competent? <laughs> <laughs> or 
often the same people who say there's a mastermind of government. They're the same people who complain that the government is a bloated bureaucracy, inefficient bureaucracy that should be replaced by private enterprise. There's the same people making those same sta- sta- statements. So I, I, I love the aliens. I want to meet them too. My, my people, the astrophysics community, has been searching for aliens for decades. And you've never found evidence of any? Not. So the community of amateur astronomers in the world, okay? Amateur astronomy, is that's a badge of honor because it means you know the night sky and you own a telescope. And it's not like amateur neurosurgeon, okay? <laughs> you don't want to go to an amateur neurosurgeon. But you want to know the night sky, go to an amateur astronomer. Amateur astronomers know the night sky. They know what the sun, moon, and stars are doing every night. They know they're very good at climate and weather because that affects whether things are visible. So they know when weather systems come in and go out and what things look like. You would think if aliens were about, up and about, that amateur astronomers would have seen more of them than anyone else. But they've seen less because we know what we're looking at. It's kind of that simple. The moment you know what you're looking at, it's an IFO, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) It's not a UFO. And so, yeah, I want to meet the aliens, but you're going to show me fuzzy video or you're going to say you have an alien, but it's in a locked box and you're not going to show it. If you have an alien in a locked box and you're not going to show it, that's the same thing to a scientist as not having an alien at all. Could you make the case for why aliens probably do exist and also the case for why they probably don't exist? No, no, they surely exist in this universe. The universe is 14 billion years old and the ingredients of life on Earth are the most common ingredients in the universe. And life began on Earth almost as quickly as it possibly could have. When Earth finally cooled down after it being formed, it was about 200 million years for signs of single-celled life. So even though we can't duplicate that yet, we don't know how, that's a frontier of biology, Earth didn't seem to have problems getting the job done within 200 million years. That's Earth. Now you have exoplanets everywhere across the galaxy. To suggest that life on Earth is alone in the universe, you'd have to have some point of philosophy that requires you believe that because it's not derived from actual uh, evidence or observations of the universe itself. So uh, aliens, usually people mean intelligent aliens, but we're happy to find any kind of life at all, bacterial life. Uh, that would be That would transform biology. What about in our galaxy, in the Milky Way galaxy? Yeah, the galaxy is the most sensible place to... So we've looked, in, we've looked for exoplanets. So What's that? A planet orbiting another star. Because if you're going to look for life, we, want to, we presume it's going to be on a planet. So if this table is the galaxy, mm-hmm. and the solar system would be about right there, we've searched a circle about this big for exoplanets. And what's the solar system versus the It's galaxy? just the sun and its planets. Oh, okay. Yeah, solar system. Mm-hmm. And then that's our solar system there. And we are part of several hundred billion stars in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And this galaxy is one of perhaps as many as a trillion galaxies in the observable universe. So to say that we're alone, that's just, you're being being philosophically irresponsible. So this table is the, the, the galaxy? Yeah, if it were the galaxy. And we've searched a coin. Coin, yes, that's a good word to use, a coin-sized volume of this galaxy. We've searched for exoplanets and, by association, life. So folks at the SETI Institute, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, uh, they come up with an analogy. But there are people who have said, well, we haven't found life yet, so maybe there's no life anywhere. And we say, no, take a cup and scoop it into the ocean. That's like saying, hmm, the ocean has no whales in it. <laughs> <laughs> is that the equivalent? Yeah, it's equivalent in terms of the space of, uh, of searching. Because it's not only in, in physical space, but it's in time. Suppose the aliens sent radio signals to us, and they arrived 2,000 years ago. Do the Romans have radio telescopes? No. But we would all count them as intelligent. So communication requires intelligence and technology. How long have we had technology to do that? 80 years. 
On the chance of probability, do you think there are aliens in the Milky Way galaxy? Yeah. Oh, sure. You think there are? I don't see why not. It's a calculation you can do. I did it with two colleagues of mine. We have about 100 civilizations in the galaxy alive now. That's not many out of the total number of stars. But again, a civilization has to evolve out of whatever it was. And it's a tiny little slice of time relative to how long the planet has been there. A hundred different living. Yeah, civilizations. I pause on the word living because living can mean many things. Well, I mean, Mars might have had life, but it would be dead today on the surface. So we're looking for living civilizations. And does that excite you? Yes, completely. But you want to now tell me it has visited you in, with fuzzy lights in the sky, and no one has, like, brought forth an alien. I, I need better evidence because you're making an extraordinary claim. Humans' fascination with meeting these aliens when we've got crazy species we've never met on our own planet. Is that's, quite a, that's a good point. And plus, what do we need real aliens for when we have Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> the funny part to me is we have no knowledge that aliens want to harm us. But we do have knowledge that humans want to harm humans. And any encounter between an advanced civilization and one that was less advanced in the history of exploration has never boded well for the less advanced civilization. So for me, we are describing aliens not as we think they would be, but as we know we are Mm -hmm. to one another. It's a mirror. And we've only got to play out what we would do as well if we found an alien civilization. What would humans do? I mean, I think we'd go and try and steal some of them (laughs) (laughs) and bring them here. Well, no, they're probably smarter than us. That's That's like worms saying, oh, we found some humans. What should we do with them? Should we corral them? No. If if aliens came here, they clearly are more advanced than we are because we haven't left low Earth orbit in 53 years. So if they cross the galaxy to visit us, oh, we're going to take a shoot a gun at them? They'll laugh (laughs) at us. (laughs) You know. In all the movies, though, we beat them. (laughs) That's so funny. I've never thought about that before, that, yeah, we just shoot guns at them. You shoot guns at them. And did it really make a difference? You know. We put like Brad Pitt or whoever in like a Tom, Tom Cruise in a 